All right, guys, I uh, got the camera out, so I'm just going to do a quick, couple quick tip videos. Um, this is just about improving the durability of your autococker's moving parts. So you'll notice here, here's like step one. I mean, this is like cocker 101. You don't want your back block actually hitting the body. Uh, I space mine, uh, they're about, about a half a mil. Uh, Let's see what I can kind of prove that. Uh, yeah, so I can't even get the smallest Allen wrench down in that hole. So we're we're real real uh, not a much of a gap. It's not going to affect your shot performance or anything. But that's just a real easy one. Uh, so what we're doing to maintain that and keep this caulking rod from spinning around all over the place, you'll notice a lot of the time they spin up. It's because the ram uses a lot of pressure to push the back block, but not a lot to pull back. So it's going to try to thread itself into the rod, and it's going to cause this whole thing to try to thread into the back block, thread into here. So it's going to spin up, mostly from trying to thread into the back block. So what I do on the back block portion, this is an easy one. You take a die three-way O-ring, and I don't have any of those on me right now, but I do have them right here. Uh, they're bigger than your normal three-way o-ring. I had to rebuild the die three-way once and I could only buy a bag of like 30 of these. So I've got extras. Uh, you put that, jam that down into the hole in the back block and then when you thread your rod in there you get a lot of tension there and that's going to be last longer um, and be tighter than any Teflon or anything like that because Teflon is going to squeeze and wear down and Teflon actually lubricates the threads so it makes it easier to spin. Um, this will keep it nice and tight in there. In the front end, because you want to be able to thread both of these tightly, especially this collar has got a gap, you take a 632, which is the same thread as your timing rod set screws, um, but you get one that's like a quarter long, and you thread that down into this collar. And what that does is it takes up any space in the base here and that way you can thread your ram in partially instead of all the way in see normally that would be all the way down but I've got a gap there it gives me more room to play up here because if that was threaded all the way in I wouldn't be able to put as many threads into the back block and so the back block wouldn't be as stable so you're just trying to balance it out kind of get it in the middle all right um the last one I think I'm going to talk about here is uh, having to do with the caulking rod. Now, keeping the caulking rod in place, uh, that's a pretty easy one. Basically, what you're gonna do is you take a bit of pneumatic hose and just snip, uh, you know, maybe a millimeter, two millimeters off and drop that into the back of your hammer uh, where the th caulking rod threads in. And then you can screw the caulking rod in and snug it up and it'll stay tight. You know, because if it's got a hard stop at the bottom, it's going to loosen up. You'll, a, lot, a lot of times you'll notice uh, your caulking rod will come loose uh, over time. This will keep it down nice and tight and only come off when you want it to. And you can do it hand tight instead of having to get on it with a wrench to keep it in there. Uh, while I'm on the subject of a caulking rod, keeping the spacing correct so you don't mash up your lug hole. So if your back block is pulling your caulking rod... When it pulls all the way back at the end of its stroke, if it is being stopped by the hammer lug in the slot of your body, you're going to smack, smash the crap out of your body. So what you want to do when you space your caulking rod, that's when you adjust the knob on the caulking rod itself, you want to adjust the knob such that when you push the block all the way back to the end of the ram's travel, you want to have room to pull that caulking knob back. So you're going to want about an eighth of an inch, maybe less, of pullback on that caulking rod. And that's the only other thing. Um, if you can keep that caulking rod spaced correctly and keep your back block spaced correctly and keep all these rods and everything in place, uh, you're, in, you're in real good shape. And uh, there's one mod on, on minis. I've got a video on if you look up the uh, uh, trigger C-clip mod with my old orange RDL. And that's just because you don't have this support here of the ASA to keep the 
cocking rod, uh, the timing rod from sliding in and out of the trigger. With a full-size body, it's not such a big deal.